Hello, fellow traders everywhere. Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club, with your midday market update for Tuesday, the 3rd of April. Ford sells a huge number of cars in Q1. We'll be looking at that stock today. Also, we have a number of market-moving sectors that are doing quite well. But we'll also be looking at three stocks that are on the move. Tenant Healthcare Corp., Constellation Brands, they're the people that sell the spirits and wine, and also Express Scripts, which we looked at yesterday, but it's also doing very well today. We'll also be analyzing all of our usual markets and seeing what's going on in the marketplace itself. But first, if you haven't tried Market Club, for a limited time only, we have a special opportunity for you to try our service. I think you'll really enjoy it. So. Go to marketclub.com right now, click on Start Trial, and you'll see this amazing offer. Plus, I have some special bonuses for you, so don't miss out on that offer. So let's go to the charts, and our first uh, market that we're going to be looking at is going to be the S&P 500, which is plus 90. And I'm a little getting a little bit concerned about this market, and I'll tell you the reason why. Is if we only go a little closer in, because it's a lot of data we've got up there, but uh, let's just go to the last three months. It potentially, it looks as though we have got a dark cloud cover going here. And let me explain what that is. Two things I'm looking at right now in this market, and here they are. One is we made a new high yesterday, right here. There was no follow through on the upside today. This market so far has engulfed two thirds of the previous day's action. So whatever action was yesterday, we've given back two thirds of it already. If it closes down here, or worse yet, if it goes continues to move down here and closes down here, this will be a dark cloud cover, which indicates that this is more than likely an interim top. And how we can tell that is because if we go down to our Williams percent R, and I'll scope this down, I'm not sure I can get both of them in at once, but uh, just about, you can see that the Williams percent R is actually slanting down, and the prices here are slanting up. So that's what's called a divergence. And a divergence is, that's a bearish divergence. So it would appear that we may be rolling over a little bit to the downside, but the trend with our trade trials are all positive monthly, weekly, and daily, and we don't pay that much attention to the daily, but certainly we have a plus 90 score, which is very positive. So let's see how that works out. And uh, let's go to our next market. Let's clear the screen. And the next market we're looking at, I'm going to go past the other two markets pretty quickly because we know what they are. The first one is going to be the Dow, and you can see pretty much the similar pattern there. It's a little bit flat. And also on the NASDAQ, uh, which is the, uh, you can see there, did not make a new high yesterday. Looks a little tired. A little bit of a rollover. This is the key level to watch in the NASDAQ. Um, in that level, I'll give you that level right now. Key level to watch is 3,069. Uh, if we go below that level, then we'll see a lot more pressure coming in. But the markets still are in a positive mode, plus 90, as we mentioned, on the NASDAQ, S&P 500, and the Dow. So definitely an uptrend still in place. Need more confirmation there. So let's go to our next market. In the next market we're looking at is gold. Now this is interest, silver, this is silver. We talked about this market yesterday and what we were looking for, and it would appear that this is playing out. We thought this is this market was rounding out like this. We also had a feeling that we were coming into like a head and shoulders. This is certainly the neckline here. So we got very close to it today. I would say over 3350. I think we probably put in a base and we'll see this market move up. Uh, from the lows we saw here around 3150, so I think we could go to 3550. I would say somewhere around these levels, which sort of pulls you back to this zone. So I think if we close over 3350, we're 3309. This is real time. Uh, this would be a, this would be a target zone that we'd be looking at in silver, but it's not there yet. And also our weekly is still negative, the monthly and the daily positive. So. We want to get all three of those going in one direction to get a strong trend. So let's clear the screen and go to our next market. The next market we're looking at, of course, is going to be gold. And gold does not look as uh, robust as silver. A little bit of a different pattern. We have a monthly and a weekly that are negative. So I don't think we're there yet in terms of um, 
this market, but I tell you what I do see. I see this market building a, what I consider almost like a triangle here, uh, or somewhat call this a wedge, but basically it, it's becoming tighter and tighter. Something's going to happen to this market pretty soon, so definitely pay attention to the market. So let's go back to our next market, and the next market we're looking at is copper. Uh, copper, we've talked about this level of 395. Everything is green, strong trend, hasn't developed yet, but this is what we, we mentioned, uh, I believe, yesterday, and this is this sort of very, very long sort of trading range. The 395 is definitely a problem right now. We got there earlier today, we reversed back down. We need to close over that level to get this market going on the upside. And right now, there's very, very good support around the 375 level. We've, we've illustrated that several times on these broadcasts. But we're in a broad trading range, but the bias is certainly to the upside. So really, you want to pay close attention to this market because it could offer some really good rewards here. So let's clear the screen and go to our next market. And the next market is crude oil. And we looked at crude oil. Um, we're looking at 102 on the May contract as support. But let's look at the USO, because a lot of people trade crude oil with the ETF, the USO. And what you can see here, we have a monthly that's positive, just like the crude itself. The weekly is negative and the daily is negative. But the one thing that's interesting here to me is if you put the Fibonacci in, and we need to go a little bit lower there. So you can see pretty much we hit the Fibonacci right on the numbers. It would appear as though we've got a uh, potential uh, double bottom here. Uh, yesterday's action was a very, very bullish negative, uh, positive engulfing line. Uh, if we close higher today, uh, it's not there yet, but if we do close higher today, that will confirm this. And then I think we'll see this market move up, not unlike this area here. So let's see what happens. But generally speaking, the market has been uh, very, very oversold. A lot of pressure coming into the energy sector. And uh, that's been one sector that has been depressed for several weeks now. But if you go down here, you can see we were very oversold. We're sort of coming out of that now. But uh, let's see how that plays out. But the Fibonacci level, we showed you that before it happened. And of course, this is confirmed with yesterday's market action. So very good support. It would seem right around the 3880 area on the USO. So next market, uh, I'm going to miss the Forex market. Uh, I'm going to go to the dollar index. In the dollar index, again, this is sort of trying to make that turn. Uh, it's exceeded its Fibonacci line. But what you have on this market is what we talked about before, and that's a bullish divergence. So here we have momentum going up. You see that? Momentum going up. And you have prices going down. So this is usually a divergence. This is a bullish divergence. And it would mean that you'll see this market should start to move higher. Maybe do this and go start going higher if this plays out to be a bullish divergence, which I think it will. Longer term, we think this market is going to go higher because of the long-term monthly trade triangle, which remains green right here. And it would seem as though with a minus 70 level, we're sort of still sort of dickering around here without any real strong trend. We need to get the weekly in a green mode, then we'll get something going on the upside. So let's go to our next market, and that's the CRB index. And that had a very strong day yesterday, still uh, off the closer to the highs and the lows. Uh, it looks like it's going to consolidate here, and we think this market's going to go higher. We think inflation is going to kick in, and uh, we need to get over the 316 level this week. If we close over 316 this week, I think we've got something going to the upside. And certainly the 320 level is a major area, as is the 325 area. So let's see how that plays out. But next market is going to be the Ford Motor Company. This is interesting. Ford sold a record number of car, uh, units in Q1. So that I think the best uh, quarter in, oh gosh, many, many years. And uh, you can see the market has really sort of just gone sideways, just really no strong sort of, certainly the level around the 13 level on Ford right here seems to be a problem. Um, generally speaking, all of our trade triangles, you can see them right here, positive and positive on the weekly and the monthly. And the plus 90 score is indicating that the trend is clearly up even though we've seen this reversal from this high 13 level. The 13 is resistance. You can see every time we've got there, 
it's been a problem. And I think that's the, something is happening. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, you've also got, on the downside, you've got the support area right here. So 12, 20 on the downside, 13 on the upside, very tight markets. Uh, but the trend is definitely bullish for Ford. So let's clear the screen, go to our next market. The next market we're going to look at is something that uh, you may not know this. Uh, this healthcare sector has been pretty hot. But we've turned up in the monthly is definitely positive from 530. We're currently trading at 552. This is a big one of the big movers today. It's actually up on average. It's up about uh, almost 2.8 percent, looking very, very good. Uh, we need to take, let me just do something I normally do. I like to do, I should say, and just put a close only chart in. So we need to take a trend line from the highs here and scope that through. So we're pretty much right on that trend line. We need to close over the trend line. So in this case, I would say we have to close over the 570 area, which is in the 20 cents high. I'm not sure that's going to happen today. But certainly going over that area, I think we'll see all our trade channels go green. So let's go to the next market. And the next market we're looking at is, I'm going to put my candlesticks on, is Constellation Brands. Constellation Brands, they own all of the sort of a lot of wine and liquor, hard liquor and it's an international company. Obviously a very, very good action today. You're up in the Constellation Brands, almost 3%. If we scope this out to a maximum, you can see this market has some upside room to go. And uh, what I did earlier was just to draw a simple trend line. I think it was right from here. Oh, one second. I think it was right from about these levels here. And I think we just went over like that. So it looks to me that you've got a lot of energy underneath this market. There's the double let me just draw this, get my tool on here. The, there you have the double bottom right here. There's the pivot point. We've talked about this many, many times. So you just measure from the lows right here, 12, to the highs. Let's see, we'll call that, uh, let's just call it 17. So it's $5. Forward that to 22, 5 on 17. So you add, so it's 17 plus 5 equals 22. And that's pretty much where the market came down. Now, we've come down further, so we can measure from the 12 to the 22 area. That's 10. So we'd be looking for this market to get up to about the 32 area, which is not so far where it was before. So I think 31 and change. So generally speaking, Constellation Brands looks very good to us. All of our trade triangles are positive. So I think it's a, definitely a buy. And this market's going to go higher. So always, always use stops when you trade. Though. That's the key thing. So let's clear the screen. And that's a just, just suggested trade. We don't give trade recommendations, as you know. But let's go to our next market. The next market we're going to look at is ESRX. We looked at this market yesterday, Express Scripts. And as it's coming up, you can see, let's just get a little closer in, let's say three months. And you can see it was a big day yesterday for Express Scripts. That was up 2.45%. And again, it's up today over 3%, 3.25. So the last couple of days, it's almost gone up 6%. And it's acting very, very, very well. So if we just scope this out, <clears throat> you can see it's uh, really doing well. The, obviously, the resistance starts right around the 58 to 60 area. But uh, generally speaking, the trend is clearly up. And it looks as though we've got a plus 100 in our score. So as I say, if you're, if you're familiar with our trade channels, which you can see, they come in. Uh, let me just scope this out. They come in right here. And... Let's just take this off the screen. We don't need that. And let's just take that off. But the trade channels come in there at 52.27. They come back in at 48. So it's going to protect you on the downside. And also you'll catch the upside. 40, we said the 48.39, which is right here. We're currently trading at 57. Nice trade, nice profitable trade. So if you're interested in trying out the trade channels, you haven't used them before, Go over to marketclub.com and click on Start Trial. There's a very special bonuses we have for you if you join today. So it's a special price. You can try it for one month for an amazing price. So, hey, this is Adam Hewison. I'll be back tomorrow looking at the markets, as always, and trying to find those triangles that make sense and can make money. So Adam Hewison for Market Club. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great trading day.